Welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about another new large language model. They keep coming and it is super exciting to see all of these different companies and these researchers releasing and iterating and innovating on large language models and to see all of these really specific fine-tuned models come out with new techniques and new approaches to training. I'm super excited. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Bloomberg GPT. And if you're familiar with Bloomberg, you know it is the behemoth in the financial sector. Bloomberg provides a ton of data, a ton of news, articles, everything you can think of in the financial sector. And what they've done is release their own GPT model, of course. And the unique thing they've done is take that proprietary data and mix it in with more generalized data that anybody can get. And I'll show you a little bit about that now. So first, Bloomberg GPT is a 50 billion parameter language and it's trained on a wide range of financial data. And they have a 363 billion token data set based on uh, Bloomberg's financial data. And they also use 345 billion tokens on general purpose data that again, you can find anywhere. And we'll look at those sources. What it says here is rather than building a general purpose LLM or a small LLM exclusively on domain specific data, they took the mixed approach, a little bit of both. So here's another portion that I highlighted. To train Bloomberg GPT, we construct FinPile, a comprehensive data set consisting of a range of English financial documents, including news, filings, press releases, web scraped financial documents, and social media drawn from the Bloomberg archives. Then they augment that with public data widely used to train LLMs today. And so in this table, you can see where they're actually getting the data from. FinPile, web, news, filings, press, and you can actually see the percentage of each. And then here's public. So they have uh, Pile CC, GitHub, Books3, let's see, Free Law, Stack Exchange, Wikipedia, USPTO, YouTube subtitles, which I thought was pretty funny, Hacker News, one of my favorite websites, Enron emails. That might be a joke, but if it's not, that's hilarious. And so here, the financial data sets are 363 billion tokens, about 54.2% of their training. The web is 42% of the training, news 5%, filings 2%. So the first public data set is the pile, which is used by GPT Neo, another really popular LLM. Next, they have something called C4, Colossal Clean Crawled Corpus. That's a mouthful. It's about 19.5% of their public data. And then Wikipedia, of course, everybody knows what that is. And here's something that I found that was interesting. Bloomberg can be applied to sequences longer than 2048 at inference time. So a lot of models are limited to that, but because they're using this alibi positional encoding, they're actually able to get larger sequences. And for the hardware, they used Amazon SageMaker, which obviously is an AWS product. And specifically, each of their instances had eight NVIDIA 40 gigabyte A100 GPU is basically the top tier of the GPU world right now, those A100s. I saw them on eBay, they're a few thousand dollars a piece. So definitely not cheap. And if you're gonna train a model like this, it is quite costly. And let's talk about evaluation. Bloomberg GPT is evaluated in two ways. And let's remember that Bloomberg GPT is a mix of really specific financial data and then general purpose data. And so they've evaluated it in the same way one on specific finance related tasks and then one on more general purpose tasks. And so let's take a look at some of the results. They compared Bloomberg GPT to NeoX, to Opt and to Bloom. And this is a bits per byte graph. So the blue is Bloomberg GPT and what you're looking for is lower. Lower is better with bits per byte. And so for overall, you can see that Bloomberg did really well. It did really well on Bloomberg specific tasks filings it absolutely crushed. And I was thinking about why that might be and actually it points it out right here. So first, Bloomberg consistently outperforms other models. That's expected, they say, and it pro provides as a sanity check. But if we look a little further down, it says, it's most significant in the filings category because these documents, while public, are typically in PDF format and thus not included in any existing data set. So the fact that they were actually able to parse and ingest PDF documents where other LLMs were not, makes it so that they are performing far beyond other LLMs on specific PDFs. And the last thing I wanna talk about is openness. 
you can imagine that this large language model is going to be incredibly valuable. Being able to query about financial data, everybody's gonna want that. Bloomberg already charges a ton, millions of dollars a year to access their Bloomberg terminal. And for this large language model, it's probably gonna be no different. And they actually go into a little bit of detail about how they think about openness. And they say, you know, on the one hand, it's really good that a lot of models are public and that people get to actually see what's going on with them. But on the other hand, a lot of the data that we have is private and we're not so sure we should be sharing it. So they don't actually say like whether or not that they're gonna share it or not, but my strong feeling is that, yeah, they're not gonna share it. They're gonna probably charge a lot of money for it. And you know, that's, that's their right. It's their data, it's their training. They went through the rigorous task of actually coming up with this model. So they get to do what they want with it. I do prefer when organizations release and open source their models, but that's just me. And that's it. I'm really excited about all of these new models coming. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.